In this video, we're going to look at derivatives of the inverse trig functions. Uh, particularly, we're going to look at the derivative of the inverse sine function. Okay. So first things first, there's two notations for inverse sine. There's the one you see on your calculator, uh, sine to the minus 1 of x. The other one, the more traditional one, is arc sine of x. Both of those things are the same. Uh, typically, a lot of calculus books, ours is actually an exception, tend to use the arc sine notation. Uh, and that's, I think, to help people not confuse this with a power. Sine minus 1 is a notation for inverse. That is not sine raised to the minus first power. Okay, sine raised to the minus first power would be 1 over sine, which would be cosecant. This is not talking about the cosecant function. Uh, this is the inverse sine or the arc sine. So I usually a lot of times use arc sine, although our textbook does use the inverse notation. And the inverse notation is probably one you saw in a lot of trig books. Now, if this thing is equal to y, either one of those, inverse sine of x or arc sine of x is equal to y, that's true if and only if sine of y is equal to x. Right, that's what it means to be the inverse. The inverse is asking what angle will give, right, what angle will give a sine of x. So in other words, sine of what angle will give you x. So example, arc sine of one half. What angle would you need to apply sine to to get one half as an answer? Or square to three over two. Or square to two over two. Or negative one. What angle would you have to apply to the sine? Now, in the notes, there's a lot of information about uh, the domains because we have to restrict our trig functions so that they only work for a limited amount of uh, value, so that their actual inverse is actually a function. So you can find that information in the notes. We're just going to go ahead and take that information as a given as we work through this problem of the derivative of inverse sine or arc sine. So the first thing we do is we want to figure out the derivative of arc sine. We want to figure out the derivative of arc sine. Sorry, hit the wrong button there. Uh, derivative of arc sine or inverse sine. So basically we write the equation down as arc sine x equals y and we basically want to find y prime. So what we do is we use our inverse condition and say, well, arc sine of x equals y. So that would mean that sine of y is equal to x. And so we do just that. We rewrite that as x equals sine of y. And now we can find y prime or dy dx by using implicit differentiation because I have things there that I know how to do the derivative of. So we go through and do that. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of sine of y would be cosine y times y prime, times y prime by the chain rule. And then solve for y prime. y prime would be 1 over cosine y or secant y. You could write it either way. But that answer is in terms of y, and we want our answer to be in terms of x. We, that answer is in terms of y, but we want our answer to be in terms of x. So we use the idea here that sine of y is equal to x. And so we draw the picture for that. Uh, remember for arc sine your angles will either be in the first or the second quadrant. Sorry, first or the fourth quadrant. Either be in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. And it actually doesn't matter which one we pick for the picture because cosine and secant are positive in both the first and fourth quadrants. So I'm just going to draw the picture so that it's in the first quadrant. So there's my little reference triangle in the first quadrant. There's my angle y. And we know that sine of y is equal to x. So using that information, we can complete two sides of this right triangle. Since sine of y is equal to x, and we know sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, we can say, oh, then the opposite side must be x, and the hypotenuse must be 1. 
So that sine of y would be equal to x over 1, which would just be 1. Now to answer cosine, we need the adjacent side. So we need this other side here. Let's call that, for lack of anything better, a b. And then we just need to figure out what b is. Well, since we know two sides of our right triangle, then by our Pythagorean theorem, we know that x squared plus b squared, the sum of the squares of the two legs, is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And then we can solve that for b. So bring the x squared over to the other side, apply square root, and we get b is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Square root of 1 minus x squared. b is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. And because that is on the positive side here, uh, we are dealing with a, the positive square root. And so now that we have b, we can go back and compute either cosine of y to get our answer or secant y. Cosine is opposite over hypotenuse. Secant being the reciprocal of cosine would be 1, the hypotenuse, over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And so putting in secant y there, that would be the hypotenuse 1 over the adjacent square root of 1 minus x squared. And so now we have the derivative of arc sine. Derivative of arc sine is actually this rational radical type function 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now in a similar fashion we can work out the derivatives for the other five trig functions. And you can find those listed in the notes. Uh, for our cosine it turns out it's just actually the negative one over this stuff. And it turns out that's actually the case for the other arc uh, co-functions as well, cotangent and cosecant. So actually what matters uh, for the rest of the information is that the derivative of arc tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Uh, for arc cotangent, it's actually going to be minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. And the derivative of arc secant is 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And that's the arc secant. That's the arc secant. Uh, arc cosecant would actually just be minus 1 over absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. So it turns out those three cos are just the negative 1 over the derivative of the negative 1 in front of the derivative of uh, the sine, tangent, or secant. So in the next video, we're going to look at some examples using these uh, formulas to work out some derivatives with our inverse trig functions.